Good morning, class. This little video will help you as we review the idea of perimeter and area, but we're going to do it in terms of the coordinate plane. So you see here in this graph, I've drawn some points, plotted some points, A, B, C, and D. We're going to take those four points and we're going to connect them together to create a quadrilateral. And when I connect, I always connect beyond the points. I don't just stop at where the points are. Okay. A, B, B to C, C to D, and D back to A. So now you can see we've created a quadrilateral looking to me like a parallelogram, one way we'd be able to tell for sure is if we knew that this length, BC, was the same length as AD, and that this line, BC, is parallel to AD. So that's the first thing you want to check when you graph polygons in the coordinate plane. Do What kind of polygon do we have? Well, here I can see I'm going from here going one, two, three, up and two to the right. So this line, AB, has a slope of three twos. Similarly, if I do the same for BC, I'm going, going one, two, three, four, and one up. Um, excuse me, one up and four to the right. One up and four to the right. So BC has a slope of, BC has a slope of, and equals one over four. Then we'll check CB. From D to C, we have to go up one, two, three, and over two. So that's the same as this slope. So now we know that AB and DC are parallel. <laughs> because they both have slope equal to three halves. And let's check A, D. Up one, one, two, three, four to the right. It also has a slope of one fourth. So we know that B, C is parallel to A, D. Both have a slope because both have a slope of one fourth. <laughs> So by that, we've proven that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Okay. Opposite sides are parallel. Well, we haven't proven it yet. We just threw the opposite sides are parallel. We haven't proven that these are the same length. To do that, we need something else. We need what's called the distance formula. Okay, the distance formula is derived from the Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem, as you may recall, for any triangle that is a right triangle, the length of the short side, we'll call it A, the length of the medium side, we'll call it B, and the length of the long side, we'll call it C, have a special relationship. If you square the first side, add it to the square of the second side, it'll equal the square on the third side. So we're gonna use that idea. If you notice this, this is like a line and this is one point on the line. Here's another point on the line. This is your up factor, and this is your right factor. So it's B over A. And we know that if we, if we can figure out what these two are, we can make the ratio, which will make the slope. If we square these two things and add them together, we'll get the square of the length of this line segment between these two points. So then we say, well, how do we get to know how far this is? Well, it's our change in x, right? Okay. So that's our change in x. That's our 
the x coordinate here, x, y, and the x coordinate here, x, y. Okay. So to distinguish them, we'll call this one and this two. Okay. So to get from x1 to x2, we know we have to subtract them. x2 minus x1, excuse me, not x squared, x2 minus x1. Okay. But we're gonna find out what that number is and we're gonna square it. Similarly, to figure out what the change in our b is, okay, which is our change in our y's, we're gonna find the difference between our y's. Plus y2 minus y1, quantity squared. And that'll equal our distance, our c squared. So that's why in the distance formula, when you see it written, it's got this big radical symbol over this stuff. X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. And that equals your distance. They're calling it distance. That's why you see it like that, because to get this length here, we have to subtract our X coordinates figure out what this change is, we have to subtract our y's, and using Pythagorean theorem, we know it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's look at that in our example. Okay. Um. So we know that this change is one, two, and this change is one, two, three. So it means this whole change has to be This change was two, helps if you have a lead. So our C squared is going to be two squared plus, what do we say, uno, dos, tres squared. So we got four plus nine, 13. That's C squared, so our C is going to be the square root of 13. So now we know that AB is equal to the square root of 13 units long. Okay? And AB is equal to the square root of 13 units long. And we'll do the same kind of calculation. Well, let's see if DC is the same. Because if it's the same, then we're on our way to proving that this is indeed a parallelogram, and we can then start to find our perimeter. Let's see, this is also a change of two in that direction and a change of three in that direction. So it's still gonna be two squared plus three squared, it's gonna be square root of 13. So we now know that DC and AB have the same measure. We can say that AB is congruent to DC. We use the same reasoning to figure out this BC length, okay? Change in the X direction, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it's a change of four in the direction, X direction, so that's gonna be four squared. And then it's a change of one in the Y direction, so plus one squared. And we're gonna square root that whole answer and that'll tell us how long BC is. So that's gonna be 16 plus one is square root of 17. So now we know that BC is equal to the square root of 17 units long. And we'll check AD and you see it's also gonna be one in the X direction and four in the Y direction, excuse me, one in the Y direction and four in the x direction, so it's gonna be the same numbers, so it's also going to be congruent. And now we have proven that this ABCD is indeed a parallelogram, which tells us a lot about the angles. We know in parallelograms, opposite angles are congruent. Okay. We know that same side angles add to 180 degrees. So we know a lot once we figure out what this thing is. Okay. Now we can figure out what the perimeter is. Well, this was square root of 13, square root of 17 plus the square root of 13 plus the square root of 17. So the perimeter would equal two square root of 13s plus two square root of 17s. And that would be a mathematically correct answer. If you then needed to do this as a, a real life problem, say this was a map of a garden space and you really actually had to buy fencing to go around this space, 
you'd have to then plug this into your calculator to get the approximation. The square root of 13 is less than 4 because the square root of 16 is 4. So this would be probably around 3.7. You can make an approximation 2 times 3.7. And this is going to be a little bit more than 4, so 2 times 4.1 would be an approximation for that perimeter. Okay. That would be the calculator work. The main issue here is this thing, this distant formula. If you can find that distance, then you can solve these situations.